Hey everyone, Sean Clement here, Richmond Hill Golf Learning Center, headquarters for Wisdom in Golf, which just celebrated its 10th year anniversary on YouTube. And um, therefore, what we're doing is we're going to be taking a video of each one of the years and the, the, the 10 most important videos in the last 10 years. And we're going to be, you know, adding or, um, or you know, reviewing them and, and seeing what was really key and important in those videos. And the first one, obviously, is the grip. So have a look at what I just did with a Clementine and you'll really appreciate the genius behind that grip. And then we'll, we'll polish up the rest. You guys are going to love this. So if I'm holding the club in my lead hand, do you notice how if I was going to hold the club through the hand this way, see that big gaping hole there? No good. So I want to fill that hole. So you're going to notice the heel pad of the hand grips on top. So I can hinge on that anatomical snuff box. And you notice how that hand is nicely clamped on. So when I'm hinging up and down, you'll notice that nothing comes apart. If I hold the club there, see all that space there? And it's going to be very difficult for me to hinge. And I feel like I'm going to have to, uh, you know, my hand's going to cramp up. So notice now I'm able to really wrap those fingers nicely around the grip and get a nice, awesome hinge. Now, for the other hand. So if I was going to throw a clementine, notice how my index wraps around the, the orange, the clementine, and the thumb comes right alongside to hold it into place. Now notice how the other fingers are cradling underneath. So you see how the index hooks on, the thumb alongside, and that cradles underneath. Well, guess what? The grip goes right there. See that? And then the left thumb would fit right there. Now, when I interlock or I overlap, notice how I'm still holding on to the orange. Now, many of you grip the club and you interlock too deep and you end up holding the club too much through the hand. Notice how my fingers can't wrap around the club properly and then you put the thumb on top to give yourself a little bit of leverage. So what we want is the, everything wraps around the fingers and then notice how the index, the index hooks on, the thumb comes alongside. So we are not holding the club with the index and the thumb. We're holding the clementine, right? So if I, I'm getting ready to throw it, it's going to be there. Now, when you throw something like this, you know, you're going to feel if you're throwing it gently, you'll notice that your the pressure around the orange is lighter. But if you're going to throw it with authority, you'll notice that the pressure increases, okay? So with the index and the thumb, that's how you hold it. But you're actually holding the club with these fingers here, actually these two. The pinky is what reunites. See, these hold, wrap around the grip, and then the pinky either interlocks or it overlaps. See that? Interlocks or overlaps. So that's how it would turn out. All right. So have a look at my video entitled Knife the Grip. You'll see another way of looking at that. But I, f I thought that that was an amazing way for you to really feel how the, the, the relationship of all the fingers. So index and thumb hook around the club and provide support, then these fingers actually hold the club. The pinky and the index of the lead hand reunite the hands together. And then finally, the last three fingers 
of that lead hand also clamped down on the club. So you basically have five fingers that hold the club out of eight. The index and the thumb are coordinating to deliver the sling toward the target. And the pinky and the index finger are bringing the hands together. So I hope that gives you a better idea on how the grip comes together. Enjoy. So pretty cool, huh? Now, here's how it looks like in practical terms. So I've got my clamped on lead hand. I can hinge up and down. Everything is clamped on, like in my knife to grip video. Secondly, when I take my grip club relationship. So if we put that together here, and let me get that. All right, so notice I've got that clamped on right there. Put the other hand on so I can either interlock or overlap. See how that works? It fits right in there. The index finger hooks on, and I've got my wonderful, you know, orange right there how it's hooked on. So at the top of the backswing, if you look at when I swing through in my finish position, notice how the index finger is supporting the, the, the finish here. And in my backswing, when I swing towards you, notice how the index is supporting at the top of the swing as well. So it really feels like I'm able to sling the club in the direction of my target. So if I'm holding that golf ball, there it is. See that? So that fits underneath. I can throw that golf ball out there. So the, the more, pre, you know, the, 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 the harder I throw it, the more pressure I'm going to have in my fingers. And the softer I throw, the softer the pressure is going to be. It's the same thing with the golf swing. When you've got a very secure grip, it's like a knot on a rope. The more tension you put on the rope, the tighter the knot gets. So you want to have a grip that's going to react to the situation. So if I'm swinging, I've got a seven iron in my hands here, I'm swinging ever so gently. Well, now it feels like my grip pressure on a scale of one to 10 is more like a five or six. Uh, through impact. So grip pressure itself, you want to feel that as you're swinging back and through without stopping, you want to feel like your, your club is staying very secure in your hands. You don't want to have any movement. So if you notice as I'm swinging back and through right now in front of you, the, the grip is staying inside my, my fingers back and through. So I'm not letting go and I'm not letting go. The, the grip isn't disintegrating. So I'm allowing the club to stay in my hands in both directions. And you notice how everything stays nice and secure and is forced to rotate in both directions. So it's a very specific way your anatomy will release in both directions. You see how that works? So if my grip stays intact, my release in my anatomy is going to be fabulous. Okay? So when I deliver with more authority, I'm, gonna, I'm going toward the keep out sign. Notice how I delivered with, uh, you know, I let the club release me at the target with a lot more pepper on it. Well, now it feels like my grip pressure on a scale of one to 10 through impact feels more like a 10 or a 12, actually. So I feel like I have to hold on even tighter. So at a dress, it feels like a five or six. And as I'm releasing through, that grip pressure intensifies to at least a nine and a half to 12 but that's for a very small fraction of a second, okay? So when you have a solid grip, you're allowed to get a full release. You're allowed to get a, you know, so this is a bone that we're connecting to the rest of the bones of the body. So the way that your lower arm is connected to the upper arms through ligaments, tendons, and muscles. 
Well, these are your portable ligaments, tendons, and muscles that wrap around this bone, right? So I am throwing. You can't throw from here, but you can squish the juice out of something from here. So if I take my, my orange and squish that way, I can squish the juice out of it. But from here, I'm going to be able to throw it. I can't throw anything from the palm of my hand. So enjoy that. And, you know, you check out the, the early video, Grip and Wrist Hinge, that we did in, back in 2000, early 2007. And then compare that to what we just talked about here. You'll see a lot of similarities. Why? Because we start from the right fundamentals. It's human body. It's this tool. And we're going that way. Okay? All the best.